Power Lab Convention in Springfield, Missouri. Today is the 30th of March, and the name of this session is Extended But Not Extreme Choreography at the PLUS Program. I'm your moderator. I'm John Marshall from Virginia. Our primary panelist is Barry Clasper from Toronto, Canada, and our outgoing chairman of the, of the Color Lab Board, Barry Clasper. What did we decide, Barry? Was I going to play or were you going to play? I thought I was going to start. Sounds good to me. <laughs> All right, go for it. So there's still more handouts at the front if uh, anybody's just come in. See, now you've got to walk up in front of everybody to get it, though. But nobody's watching. Our new board member. So, my handouts are not built with the idea that you're going to follow along with what I'm saying in the handout. They're, they're kind of a bit of exposition on the theory behind what I'm going to say, and uh, I don't really pay much attention to, to what's in the handout. But hopefully what I do say will be something that relates back to the handout. When you read the handout, you can kind of understand where I was coming from. So don't think you're going to follow along and it's going to make any sense. Um, and as you can see, it's four pages long, close typed. So I don't really want you reading it now. Um, I'm going to present some uh, examples. And uh, neither of them will be in the handout. So there's a couple of examples in the handout just to again, provide examples of what I'm getting at with the general theory, but um, they're not what I'm going to present here today. Just to give you some background on, on where this idea came from, from the session, um, if you look at the standard application books, how many of you <coughs> look at them and pay attention to, callers are starting to pay attention to those books to the extent that they never call anything that isn't a standard application. So now we've got dancers who believe that that's all there is, that you know, that's all calls do is the way they see it in the standard application book. When you look at those standard applications, there's some of them that are actually kind of hard. You know, they're really not that easy. You know, why should girls fold, peel the top be considered a standard application? Really? Peel the top from a Z is standard? Peel the top from a left-hand column is no-go. No and in fact, peel the top from a left-hand column obviously is no harder. In fact, it should be easier than from a Z. So we have applications like that, which are not in and of themselves hard. It's just that dancers never see them. And because dancers never see them, they don't know how to do them. And because they don't know how to do them, we never call them. Because we never call them, dancers never see them, and they don't know how to do them. So this vicious circle gets well established. And now we've got a bunch of easy material out there that we could use that we stay away from because we know as soon as you go there, the floor is going to falter and there's going to be lots of, lots of fallout. So what we're getting at with this session is what are some things that you can do without having to workshop and do an extensive teach so that you know, you've got the dancers standing there watching you while you're explaining the deep theory behind some call. You know, we don't want to go there. We want something that, with just a couple of additional cues, takes them from what they're used to to something that's a little different and that then you can continue to use in the rest of that dance. And if you're calling to the same dancers a lot, they get used to you using this material and they can actually get to dance it. So I'm going to start talking about um, Dixie Grand. How many of you use Dixie Grand? How many of you use Dixie Grand to anything other than an element left? Much smaller number. <laughs> so I'm going to need a square. And we're going to have to do some, uh, some example stuff here. So if I could have a square with lots of memorable people in it so I can keep track of corners. We won't hold you. So Justin needs a partner. <laughs> Barry, we won't hold you to a resolve. We won't hold you to resolve. Well, actually, I wasn't planning to do a bunch of resolves because they just take time. We could be together. We've danced before. Yeah, last hour. So 
here's what you're used to. Uh, head step into the middle fascia corner, or pair off if you know that call. Pass to the center. So those of you who use Dixie Grand, yeah, pass to the center is a mainstream call, so I wasn't going to plan to talk about that here. <laughs> <laughs> so those of you who Dixie Grand, use Dixie Grand will recognize this. Right? <laughs> right, this is the quintessential standard setup for calling a Dixie Grand. We have a paired couple in the middle, and we have their corners standing behind them. Right, same sex standing behind same sex. Uh, there's lots of different ways you can mentally conceive of this setup. That happens to be the way I think of it, but um, you can think of it any way you like, but that's what you've got. So let's just do it so people see what happens. Dixie Grand. So you do a right, you do a left, you do a right, everybody's looking at your corner, element left your corner. And go back home. So the first thing that we can look at to be a little bit different, but not hard, is think about doing Dixie Grands to an element left, because how many dancers expect to be anything other than an <laughs> element left? And uh, you'll, you'll see as we get to the next part of my presentation that that is another big trick that you've got to you've got to work on. Um, but you can do Dixie Grands in the middle of a sequence. There really is no reason they have to end with an element left. But getting the dancers over that hurdle takes a little bit of, of work. So where else can you do Dixie Grand from where it gives you an element left? Head step in the middle, face your corner, pass through. How many of you do it from here? <coughs> so everybody starts, Dixie Grant. And now look, you get your corner again. Take them home. So I got there in kind of a prosaic way. You wouldn't want to dance them into that position. But I'm doing that so that you can see kind of what the setup actually is, you know, how you got there. So if you can do an element left, You've got a zero box you can pass through and do a Dixie Grand. Now that's kind of, you know, you think a lot of dancers will recognize that they're looking at their corner and they'll think, well, why did you go by that element left to go to a Dixie Grand to an element left? But of course, there's lots of other ways you can develop that setup. Um, but you have to be careful. Most dancers are not used to seeing it from there. In fact, they're not used to seeing it from anywhere where everybody starts. Some people have the mistaken impression that with a Dixie Grand, you can only start when you've got uh, four people starting and then everybody continues. Not so. It's everybody who can starts. So uh, let's look at a number play. I'm going to have to go to my notes here. I'm going to forget all the stuff I was going to look at. So let's look at it, uh, the setup from an eight chain, uh, what it looks like. So we did it from a trade by there. Uh, four ladies chain three quarters. Those in the side positions, ladies chain. And the same four lead left. <laughs> Give you body flow and everything. <laughs> so this probably most people didn't follow what happened there. Um, I stumbled on this one actually. This is one of those things where I'm pushing my checkers and some magic thing happened. I went, oh, that was kind of neat. And what I found was I had my key man on the outside with his corner. So we'll pretend Justin is my key man for now. So my key man's on the outside with his corner. And in the center, you've got an unmatched pair. Nobody's looking at anybody they know. So those of you who do the friends and enemies kind of thing uh, will recognize that. So the way I can see that is I've got a key man with a corner. I don't know anybody else that they're looking at. Dixie Grant, right, left, right. There's corner, take her home. So these are fairly specific get-ups. Um, so that means you have to know how to set them up. Is that an eight chain three? That would be an eight chain three, yeah. <laughs> and in fact, I use that the mainstream as the mainstream get out for that same snapshot. So Dixie Grand from there is the same as eight chain three. A useful thing to know. 
So here's another place you can do it from. Uh, yeah, four ladies change three quarters. Join hands, circle left. Walk around your corner. Seesaw partner. Dixie Grand. Oh. <laughs> Alaman left. Nice little routine. <laughs> that one will probably actually go down more easily than some of the others, just calling it cold. Um, but again, you have to get the dancers used to the idea that they're going to get this Dixie Grand thing in setups that they're not used to something other than that very first one uh, that I showed you. So now let's look at some situations where we put Dixie Grand in the middle of a sequence. Now, I, when I sight call, I, I have a little handicap. That's it. I can't see sequence. I look at the square, I have no idea what the sequence is. I can figure it out eventually. But the dancers are usually standing there looking at me while I'm trying to do it. So I can't work on resolves where I have to be able to see sequence. So this is a problem when you're trying to use Dixie Grand in the middle of a sequence because Dixie Grand turns into a circle. One of the neat things that I like about Dixie Grand is it doesn't matter where it starts from it turns into a circle. Everybody's walking around the rim of a circle, and you immediately have circle choreography comes into, comes into play. And of course, with everybody doing circle choreography, you can't change the sequence. Everything you say just keeps the sequence whatever it was. So if you're not in sequence when you start this, then you can't get to a, a nice neat element left without starting to do something ugly, like talk to the heads separately or the sides separately, something like that. Um, so you need to be a little careful about setting this kind of stuff up. So, let's try this one. So you're all squared up, everybody face your partner. Dixie Grand. Left touch a quarter to an Alamo ring. They just did it, I'm impressed. <laughs> Alamo swing through. Twice. Everybody hinged by the right, right and left grand. So that's just an example of how you can fit something like a Dixie Grand at the beginning of a sequence or in the middle of a sequence. Here's another one. Head square through two. Sides roll away. Pass to the center. Now this is a trick I use a lot when I'm sight calling it because I said, I remember I can't see sequence. So I've got to have some other way to talk to the dancers that lets me move some of the dancers without moving some of the other dancers. When you set it up like this, so I've got a sachet couple in the middle and a normal couple on the outside. When I call the Dixie Grand from here, I'm going to have the sexes moving and boys, two boys are moving one way, two boys are moving the other way. Same for the girls. So the sexes will meet. That means I can talk to the sexes. And uh, people can figure that out. Everybody Dixie Grant. Pass through with the neck. Finish the Dixie Grant. Now this is, this is exactly the problem that you get into. When you call Dixie Grant, and it's weird. They, they knew that one was weird, right? They could tell right away. They don't finish it. They figure something's coming, so they do a right and a left, and they hang on to that last right hand, and then you get unexpected results. So you have to make sure to tell them to finish the Dixie Grand. So now you're all looking at someone around the circle, aren't you? You don't have a trade by, which is what you've got there. You're actually looking at somebody around the circle. We're into circle choreography now. So pass through with the next one. Swing this girl, promenade home. I think oh, you went too far? Some of you passed through already when I said pass through. Yeah. But the issue is, you're meeting, when you do the pass through, now you're... He is a girl. I am a girl. You're at a, you are a girl. Yeah. Okay. Okay. One more time. Let's, let's try it one more time. So people can see it happen. Is your restart program. <laughs> so head square through two. Sides roll away. Pass to the center. Dixie Grant. 
and let it degenerate into a nice round circle as you do that. So there's the last hand of the Dixie Grand. Now you're all looking at somebody around the circle. Until you hear another call, you don't know what's coming. There could be all kinds of stuff coming. What kinds of calls do you think you might be able to do from here? You could, except they just did a right hand, so it's kind of ugly. But a left hand spin the top would or if you did a left Dixie Grant, you could do an all eight spin the top. Not right away. <laughs> I, I found that you've got to kind of work them up to that. You don't have to do a lot of workshopping, but you've got to sort of gently drop the cues that this is going to be something different to what you're used to. Now the problem is you've got some boys going one way, some boys going the other way, same for the girls. If everybody passes through with the one they're facing, passer is normally done with the right shoulder. I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> You're all looking at somebody around the circle, right? Yeah, so I was still going with like the weaving motion of right, left, right. Now I got my left. Would you still do the pass through with the right? Yeah, I mean the way I normally call that when I, when I use this particular thing is right or Dixie Grand, and then as they're pulling by with the last hand, they say walk by the next, which actually is choreography they used to hear. I mean, that's fairly common in and uh, you know the mainstream circle star our kind of stuff to have them walk by the next and which is the equivalent of the pass through now everybody should be looking at their partner hopefully right no you mean my sequence doesn't work we're half out we're half out oh well, that's ugly that's my partner i probably missed something oh wait a minute i see i didn't i added some stuff to this sequence so everybody swing this girl and promenade so now you're all in sequence with your opposite. Okay. Join hands, circle left until you get home. Until the boys get home. Four ladies chain across. There's all kinds of things you could do out of that. You had a circle with opposites, right? So you could have a uh, hit boy and your girl wheel around, and now you've got uh, opposite lady lines. Those of you who are into cramps and stuff would know exactly what to do with that. Um, so again, I'm not trying to show you whiz man get outs here. So here's another uh, thing you can do with that particular situation. Hit square through four, sides roll away. Pass to the center. So here we are back in that same situation. Dixie Grand. Pass through the next one or walk by walk by one, whichever you like. Star through with the next one. Now look what you ha what happened when you did that. You've got one couple looking out, one couple looking in. So you can do stuff to normalize the square from that point. You can do things like have the couple looking in step forward past the ocean. And you've got a nice three quarter tag. Of course, we can do all kinds of stuff with a three quarter tag, can't we? Yeah. How many people would know what they might do with a three quarter tag they just built that way? How about the Dixie Grand? <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you, could, you could set it up, set up a way to do a Dixie Grand from there. There's no reason you couldn't. It's exactly the same as the trade by setup, right? Except you've got a wave in the middle, but they, so they've got the first hand of the Dixie Grand in their, in their hand. But you'd have to say something like, everybody start Dixie Grand. They don't really have the Dixie Grand set up there. That's not where they are. But um, So what would I do with this? I'd do something like outside couples promenade a quarter. Center four, spin the top. Now you've got a quarter tag. You can do something with that, right? Ping pong circulates and all kinds of neat stuff. Square your sets. So the key is when you're going to do something unusual like this that develops one of these weird things in the circle, you've got to have some way to get out of it relatively easily. Um, and a lot of the, the um, reluctance that we as callers have to explore some of these <coughs> usages is that it generates something that is different to what we're used to. And we think, well, what the hell do I do with that? You know, if I build this thing, sure, I can get, in, get into it using a relatively easy usage of a call, but then I get this thing that I have to, to deal with. So it behooves us to sit down with our checkers and work our way through the solutions to those, and then you've got them in your kit bag. Let's try one more. 
So side or head square through four, sides roll away, pass to the center. You know this routine now. Dixie Grand. Walk by the next one. Star through. Couple couple looking in past the ocean. The other is California Twirl. And there's our quarter tag thing again. Okay, square your sets. That was just another way out of that. So here's another setup you can use that gives you the ability to talk to the sexes. Head couples pass through. Separate around one. Squeeze in, make lines of four. Pass through. Wheel and deal. Dixie Rand. Now, Here's, if you, when you get brave, you know, you figure, if you, if you went to the workshop that was just before this one, um, extended but not extreme mainstream, you might have worked on slide through, I don't know if you did or not. But one of the things I do a lot with floors is work on slide through, because all the way up to about C2, they can't slide through with the dam. Try calling a slide through from here. Go ahead, slide through. You should get one couple looking in and one couple looking out. So again, you can do these tricks. Those facing in past the ocean, the others California twirl, and you got a nice neat quarter tag again. So it's square your sets. I'm not going to try and call you out of there. So that just gives you some impressions of, of things that you can do with something as simple as Dixie Grant that we use in this very, very rudimentary trite kind of way all the time, but it's a call that you can actually get a lot of mileage out of. The key to remember is it turns into a circle. So you can do, do neat things like do a Dixie Grand to a single circle to a wave and we've got a thar. And then you can do things in the thar. Um, you, as you saw, we can do star throughs and slide throughs and things to make s certain kinds of circles. You can get circles facing out if you set it up the right way. Uh, so there's lots of neat things that you can do with it, but you just have to do a little pre-planning. So I've talked long enough, I think, on that example, so I'll turn it over to John now. Thanks for the uh, square. Are you going to need them right away? Well, let's have this square sit down and uh, maybe we can recruit some new people. So you're not all standing here all the time. This, my name is Justin Russell, I'm from Memphis, Tennessee. This question's not for me, but another caller asked it. On, on Dixie style, right, left, right to a single circle, it's still the same way, even though the left hand's free. Yeah, well, you've just done a right hand. The thing with single circle is it's actually two hands, right? So yeah. if you've just done any kind of pull by, a single circle isn't too comfortable. Okay, I'll tell but, the other guy. But you could, you could dose a dough and single your <coughs> left. <laughs> well, or along that same line. If you would have said to the dancers uh, after that last hand pull, I, you know, pass the next with the left. That, if those are concerned with that, the body flow and the hand usage, that's one way to get there using English. It won't help you a lick in Japan. It won't, won't help you. Not a, not a hoot. Right? Um, a couple of things I wanted to mention about what Barry was doing, especially some of the and more unusual ones. We need to develop trust with the dancers as quickly as you can. If it's your home group, hopefully you've all long ago developed that. But if you're calling elsewhere for people that don't know you, you need to ease into these things and build as much trust with that floor as you possibly can before you start asking a lot more from them. And of course, obviously Barry's not proposing all those things would happen in one tip or even two. You know, it would take a fair amount of time to lead in that with people that don't know you. There's another element about difficulty. The moment we put dancers in a starting spot that they're not used to being in, you have automatically increased the difficulty. Right out of the boot, no matter what you've called, you've put them somewhere where they're not used to being, it makes it harder. And if you leave them there a little too long, they're gonna fix it for you. And it's like all you need is to do is have the wrong people turn around and make it look right. So watch out for that. Develop your trust best you possibly can but recognize that when there are places they've not seen before, it's harder. Um, when we do 
so I'm a big believer in starting dancers in when I'm being creative, starting in different geographic locations in the square. Uh, I like to use as an example, and if we get time to do it, we can talk about some of these, but I like Crossfire is a good example. So often it's called from parallel right hand and two face lines with boys on the end. That's the most common called spot. But how many places can you find in the square where you can set the dancers up and have that same identical action? Could you have the heads, for example, I'll say it quickly, past the ocean, recycle gear lift. So now we have a right hand, two base line in the middle, boys on the ends, girls in the center. So there's one. You put a right handed title line um, on each side of the square, boys cross fold to the right, girls straight and extend. Same thing, keep looking for different places. You'll find a lot of spots in the square. What about in that title, uh, two base line, change the handedness of it so that it's a left hand, two face on each side. The center four could do it while you give the outsides something else to do. That's another issue. If we have a four-person call that we're directing, let's make sure we give the other dancers something to do other than to stand there and stare. Unless you need them to see what's coming before their turn shows up, in which case it's a good idea to let them watch. Right? That's a, you automatically turn one of your group, part of your group into a demo group, and that will work for you. So those are important things. There's another thing that I think is important to us. When we're wandering into newer territory, be very aware when you're pushing your checkers what your ending formations are going to be and knowing how to get out of those quickly to normalize. If it is different, a little unusual, and you have some breaking down, you want to resolve the floor as quickly as you can. One of the things that I think is hard for us when we put on our choreographic thinking caps, is to think simple. We seem to automatically start looking at the whole apple at once and we're going to try to swallow it and make everything right in one shot. And I'm not sure that's necessarily doable in many cases and not necessarily desirable even from the dancer's standpoint because that is often much more complicated than looking for the simple, easy way to normalize the square. So be aware when you're going to start looking at different starting formations for calls. Whatever you're going to do, how do you get out of it? Quickly and simply. Later on, you can make it harder if you want to. You can become, uh, you can go off the reservation, I think, is Brian Clark's uh, frame of reference for that. So I do need a square, if at all possible. I could appreciate that. If you can square up, I'd like to show you some things with you, share them with you. It won't, be, it won't be nasty, guys, I promise, it's okay. And besides, those of you who are starting to fall asleep, please get up now. <laughs> that would be me. We know it's late in the day. There's, you know, at least half the group is thinking about a nap, and then there's that, you know, other part of the group that's thinking about a cocktail. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll, we'll try to keep things along. The call I want to work with for now is AC Ducey. Can we have the head step in, turn, face your corner, please? Step to an ocean wave. Swing through. From here is very often the most commonly called AC Ducey and circulate centers trade. Now I would point out, if you're going to get creative with AC Ducey's, you need to know what circulates do. Really important. Circulate is probably one of the hardest calls in square dancing. And knowing that part is really important. Very often you'll see the dancer, the callers call a swing through and then an AC Ducey right behind it as I just did. Some callers will tell you that's overflow for the boys, having just traded and now trading again. Other callers will tell you that they think four quarter rotations is okay. Anything over that is not. It's a judgment call. Especially when you look at the third call. Because you got to be really careful then. You know, because, you know, you end up doing the swing through, you do the AC, you see and call circulate. And you're running some people in circle. So watch for that. But this is a pretty much standard one. Boys run right. Thank you. We can call it from here. We often do. AC, do see, please. Still no problems there. We're all good. I've not gotten anywhere off the reservation even a little bit. Let's talk about doing this one. Let me ask, how do I want to do this? Tag the line, please. 
everybody face out. I'll call AC Deuces from here, particularly if I'm comfortable with boy-boy trades. Otherwise, I would set it up so that the center boy had a girl on his right, so that that partner trade is more common. But if you would please, AC Deucey. Let's have the ends pass through. Same situation, we now have inverted lines. AC Deucey. Everybody hinge. AC Deucey. Now, I'm not gonna fractionalize. I'm not gonna be doing once and a halves unless you really wanna see some of those. Right now, let's work with what we have, okay? All right, let me ask the, uh, you're gonna working plus that we can do that. Girls, chase right. Down the middle, thank you. Good. Come on in. There we go. Good. So again, you notice I had the ends facing in. Centers now have the right hand. Common trade, more common trade. So we can do an AC Ducey from here. Please do that. Straight ahead, Bill. That's your circulate action, right? Centers cross run. There you go. Thank you. All right, here we go from here, AC Ducey. All eight circulate. So how do we want to get out of this? You know, we don't see a lot of three to one lines at plus usually. There are some simple ways that are a bit cleaner, particularly if your dancers will work same sex. It's easier to talk gender quite often, and I have that now, but I could have the center boy again with the girl on his right, which would be more common, but let's have the boys chase right, girls circulate, so they're not standing around waiting. Times out well, we've now converted our three and one to two face lines. We're in good shape here. Everybody tag the line, please. Face right. So as the popular saying goes, let's uh, dig a little deeper. Girls hinge. How many centers are there in the square? Four. There are four centers in the square. The four girls are centers right now. They're all standing on the center line of the square. If I call an AC Ducey from here, I expect the four men to circulate in the large box around the outside of the square and the girls to trade with the right hand. We're drifting off of the reservation. When I call this to the dancers and I'm workshopping an AC Ducey, I would tell the girls, squeeze your right hand gently. You're going to be using that in the next call. AC Ducey. They'll trade with the right, again, recognizing centers and ends. That's not a real common AC Ducey, folks. We're getting starting to get the edge of that reservation now. And if I could just make an editorial comment, what is actually hard about that? Right? The four centers are, are really obvious. Four outsides are really obvious. It's just that we never do it. How long would it take to train our dancers to recognize AC Ducey from here? It's, it's not something... I'm not saying that this is something that you could do quickly, like as, as John was saying, this would turn into a workshop to get them to hear. Mm -hmm. It's not something you could just sort of quickly urge them through. Um, you'd have to kind of explain, just as he did, you know, girls through the four centers. Um, but my question is, why is it that when we're teaching dancers, we don't teach them this as one of the positions that AC Ducey is logical from? Because it works really well. Now, one caveat, if you're going to call this, and there's a dan advanced dancers on the floor, you won't get what you want. <laughs> no, they'll do a six by they'll two. They'll do a six by two. But let me comment, too, on this. Another way you might look at it, in, in the parallel waves, the parallel two base lines, you had two people in the center trading. They're used to that. I have two people in the center on each diamond who are trading. Their centers of their diamond, they could trade. Now then you begin to say, well, where did the boys go? But of course, this is why the call is an eight-person call, and they're all moving around the outside. Do a diamond circulate, please. Good. Has a very centered two boys trade. Those two boys run right. You notice I specified very centered two. So again, I'm differentiating between the center four. That helps the dancer see that. Well, here we are again, folks. I got four centers. They don't happen to have right hands. They're be doing partner trades rather than arm trades. And we need to warn them before you show them this. You know, you don't just call it. Just because the girls did a right hand trade doesn't mean the boys are going to be any easier right now. 
you know, they're going to, they'll fumble on this, so you need to remind them. Fellas, your centers, your trade is a partner trade, not an arm trade. Girls, you're doing the circulate for the first time now this afternoon around the outside of the square. All right, ACDC, do see four girls, big box around the outside. Good, there we go. I'm going to step up here. You're fine. A little further for me, huh? Thank you very much. Well, wardrobe malfunction. Don't look. Ah, too late. Oh, okay. All right. So let's talk about something else now. We need to get out of this, right? Let's not forget about that. We're trying to get out of this bad boy. All right. So, um, Randy, give me a good, quick, easy way to, to normalize or relative. Always, always do a left half tag. Okay. Don't do it yet, guys. Can you see that left half tag? I think left half tag, this is already hard enough for them, right? Left half tags are not real common. I love it. And I can set that up with a left half tag to right and left grand be very cool. I'm sure Randy would do that too. I would answer that. Right? <laughs> However, I want to get out even quicker. Boys, bend the line. That's a lot more obvious. And it leaves you a little bit more user-friendly spot. I would have preferred, from dance flow, I would have much preferred to have called boys cast off three quarters, it would have been a push cast, and have the girls circulate at the same time. Or, we had the boys bend the line, girls turn in, just quarter in, girls just turn to the right, boys square through two. So we're quickly coming back to something that we recognize. Again, I'm using all this in same gender type situations. Yeah, girls, you would automatically touch hands, you'd breathe together. That's a good thing. Uh, one more. Uh, touch a quarter, please. Do a left swing turn. Boy, trade. Boy, run right. There we go. I want, to, I, want to, I want to back up a little bit, not so close to the reservation now. Wheel and deal, please. Square through three. I warn the dancers the first time I do this. Remember your definition. AC is. So the centers had to trade. That was no problem. The real issue was the outside dancers facing out. What's a circulate from there? Many plus dancers have never seen a circulate from there. And that's something that you need to show them. That's not something they would automatically see. Everybody pass through. Trade by. Pass through. AC Ducey. Good. Now you notice, folks, I haven't talked at all about rolls with this call, nor spreads with this call. You know, you have a wealth of material with one call, but we need to know how to get out of those things. Please, beer left, since we don't have any action motion right now. Good. A couple circulate for me, please. I'm not going to help them. Tag the line three quarters. AC Ducey. There's that center four again, you see, right? But you all professional callers, so I wasn't worried. I knew you'd get it. <laughs> <laughs> Extend. Hinge. Extend. AC Ducey. Outsides roll. Got it? You ready? I would help the dancers at this point. Centers, rear back a little bit. Everybody load the boat. Centers turn out. Centers out, out, and then partner trade, and then side of suit. Or AC Ducey, whichever comes first. Or Heek Up Chain, whichever comes quicker. Right? I think we ventured into extreme. Exactly. Exactly. But, but let's talk about that for a minute. Barry just said we ventured into the extreme. Of course he is, because have we been talking anything about load the boats? Have we been talking about any usual stories? Of course we haven't. But let's do this. Have the heads do a partner trade and roll have the sides past the ocean okay now let me ask you to do this center four i should have done it this way center four back up get nose to nose with this partner right now all right how would you feel in fact i'll make it even easier center's boxing that so your nose to nose toes to toes all the other good parts in between okay so from here, if I call load the boat, centers, you'll be much more successful because after you do your pass through and face out, it feels what you're most used to. All right? But we can load the boat from here. We're not talking fractions. But if you step into that right-hand wave, if you would, please. 
But now you notice I gave you a little helper thing. I said rear back a little bit if it helps you. And it'll help you even more because of this particular starting point. So rear back a little more in the middle, rear back a little bit, and everybody load the boat. Centers pass through, turn out, notice, partner trade, pass through, good. <laughs> Lovely job. You guys should not have been laughing at them before. Your turn should be coming up. <laughs> so let's talk about this for a minute. We all agree that the center port answers are still in the middle of the square, not on the outside? Please say yes. yes. yes because they are, right? We've decided we've activated those people, they were in the middle, they're still in the middle. I don't know if I want to go down this road or not. I'm not sure I have the nerve. Controversy at a time. Shall I? Uh, you know, I'm gonna move off of the AC Deuces for now. I have, there, there are other AC Deuces if we have time, we'll come back to them. But again, being aware of all the things I've talked about as we go. I'm gonna take a shot at this, we'll see how it works out. Split circulate. <laughs> Centers had to flip away from each other and they're now facing on the end. And you're facing here. You were right. And, and step up on the outside so you get your shoulder next to the inside. There you go. Right. Right. Circulates and split circulates are a lot harder when you start doing from these kinds of formations. This is really getting off the reservation, in my opinion, at plus. <laughs> I would not expect plus fours to do this. It would be a major workshop, and it would not necessarily even be a comfortable workshop. <laughs> However, do an AC Ducey. And circulate, centers trade. Now, outside, you should be back to back after your pass through. You would be back to back on the outside. Bumper to bumper. There you go. I knew I'd find the right turn. Okay. <laughs> do one half of a split circulate. And center the outside, just step forward, hook on the end, you're done. Okay. Enough of that. I don't really want to go there. I don't want to go there. <laughs> Have all the centers run around the ends. How are we doing? You guys still okay? You feeling all right? You're looking pretty good. <laughs> all right. Let's have the centers touch quarter. You don't always find yourself in this kind of a formation, but you know, if you do, this is another place for an AC Ducey, but we'll add the roll in to help normalize quickly. Everybody do an AC Ducey, centers roll. Okay, so you're facing in the middle. All right, now you can do that AC Ducey twice because we've been here before, right? I'm not doing it, but you, we could, all right? Let's have the ends fold behind the centers. Very good, double pass through. AC Ducey. You guys are getting really good on that outside circulate, aren't they? Yeah, you look good on that. Now, let's have the center four past the ocean. Have the outsides face in. Okay? AC Ducey. Outsides are back to back. All they did was a pass through. So let's talk about a quick way to normalize this to something we feel comfortable with. Anybody? <laughs> One comment was a center's pass through. Uh, that certainly would normalize this pretty quickly. I was thinking about have the outsides fold. Yeah. And you, of course, you'll touch hands, obviously, because you know right where you are in it. Right? You're touching hands on the outside. Okay. So now we have the quarter tag situation, and that's, that's a quick way to normalize. Okay. Extend. Split circulate. Once and a half. AC Ducey. Outsides are circulating. There you go. Good. Center four dancers do a linear cycle. Have the outside girl do a U-turn back. Everybody got a line looking in. We feel a little better now, kind of quickly, using calls from the Mariner Plus program. So these are the kinds of things that I ask you to look at when you are working new things, trying to be creative, but not ridiculous. And you need to take them through it a step at a time because a lot of these things I've shown you, I'd never expect to do them all in one shot, you know, even necessarily even in one night. Just take the stuff, workshop it over a period of time. Use it, you know, work it into your singing call figures. That's also another good tool. Um, I'm pretty well done here. Um, another call, we have few, another minute or two, Mary. We, I think we're okay on time. We, I thought I went to five. Five fifteen? Okay. 
slide through, double pass through. Okay, we all know the call peel off, and this is where it's done most of the time. All unless you're used to having same sexes in front and trailers, right? Leader trailers. Um, this is an important issue, by the way. I'll, I'll veer off for just a moment. Your dancers need to learn to recognize whether they are leaders or trailers, centers and ends. Think about the ACDC. Centers are trading, ends are circulating. They need to know who they are. That's something they should practice or you should give them drills on, in my opinion, uh, even before they get to uh, plus at all, if at all possible. Uh, would you do a peel off, please? Pass through. I want to show this the simplest way. Do a wheel and deal and double pass through. The way I teach the call peel off uh, is by painting a mental map. I explain it to the dancers initially as we have an imaginary line on the floor and it runs from where I'm standing to the back of the hall. We're going to make that line red today. And the lead dancers, and I know Randy uses a similar thing when he uses different colors as I remember Randy from a previous panel we did together. Um, gold and silver. Gold and silver? You told me chartreuse, you lying dog. <laughs> All right, imaginary line running between, from the front of the hall to the back of the hall, it's behind the boys, it's in front of the girls. Because on a peel off, the people involved, the leaders and the trailers are gonna end up sharing that same line. The lead people are gonna turn away from one another and step up onto that line. The trailing dancers are gonna step up onto that line, turn away from each other. You'll all be occupying sharing the same line and the square will move kind of forward to adjust. Peel off. Slow me no good, right? Okay, do me a favor please. Everybody uh, do a partner trade and roll. Pass to the center. Don't forget your trade voice, thank you. All right. Now, I've changed the axis of the square, so the line has to be a different color. The line's going through the sides now, and we'll make that a blue line. All right, it's behind the girls, it's in front of the boys. Many of you call peel off from here? I'll bet not. Not very often. Well, if I work it this way, I can ask the girls, you're the leaders, the line is behind you. You have to end up on the end of that line. Boys, you have to step up on the line, and, and again, turning away from one another, you'll be sharing the line. Peel off. Very nice. Bend the line. Pass through. Uh, how do I want to show you this way? Um, can't do that. Half tag, please. Boys, run around the girls. Everybody do a left touch quarter. Good. What color is the line? Red. Red. It's from the front of the hall to the back of the hall. It's in behind the boys and in front of the girls. So the leaders of the boys, they're looking out of the box, they're going to peel and become the end of the line. Girls are going to step on the line, turn away from each other. Like all the other peel-offs, you'll be sharing the line with the boys. Peel-off. Didn't take long. It doesn't take long. And I bet most of you aren't calling peel-offs from left or right-handed columns. We're from beginning double pass-throughs. Paint them a mental map, show them where it is, and get them out quick. Bend the line. Do a left touch a quarter. I like using the left one first because more often than not, boys especially are used to going to the right more often. But this peel off is away from the center. All right, peel off, chain down the line. So the hands are right there, nice and smooth, very nice. Um, I think that's enough uh, for, for what I have at the moment. I've got stuff on crossfires and some other items along scootbacks, but you know, let me ask you to fill in at this point a little bit, and then I'll come back if we have time. John? Yes, questions, please, comments. Ted. Uh, Al, I'm sorry. Okay. Are you done with the answer? Uh, do you need the an answers now, or can I sit? Uh, I think I, I think I do. Uh, hi, Jeff. <laughs> okay. Uh, Al Roth, uh, Worcester, Massachusetts, uh, caller. Uh, the peel-off mm -hmm. description that you use, I, you know, I, I agree with, but there's something in the definitions that's a problem for me. Uh, when you have the dancers in on that center line of their box, mm -hmm. 
you automatically are enlarging the size of the square beyond what it should normally be. Mm -hmm. Because those center dancers, before they stepped up onto the line, mm -hmm. they had the spacing of one spot Correct. between them. Yeah. And when they finished this, the peel-off, now they have the spacing of one and a half spots. Mm -hmm. It seems like there ought to be an adjustment that's there automatically is. added at the end. There is, and actually I said that, that. I actually said that. I didn't hear that. Yeah, I did say a comment on them. They'll did you say that? You know, because of the square being apart, I said they'll, they'll adjust back together. So okay, it's, so it's like like file to line. Yeah, it's a breathing exercise. The square breathes. Is that in the definition? Or, Probably I have not, not seen it. But, you know, for example, think about this. If we have the dancers in parallel ocean waves, and we call swing through, and then we call spin the top. There right. is not there, there, okay. exactly. There's no room for four right. dancers in the middle. Right. What happens is we're breeze to accommodate out, but it also the next call may very well have to breathe back in. Okay, so so at the end of that call, they are expected to adjust. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the question. Anyone else comments or questions before we let these poor folks sit down for a minute? Unless Barry needs them. Randy, please. Oh crap! <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't me. I didn't say it. For the record, it was not me. <laughs> Randy Doherty, uh, pass the ocean, would you please? <laughs> Swing through. And I'm going to set them up for our normal, uh, like the peel the top setup, so the girls fold, but we're not going to do a peel the top. Girls fold, and that gives you the Z. Go ahead, girls. Are you? The problem is that I have trying to train my dancers is they think about this imaginary line. I think it would be two red lines, according to you right now. Is the red line between the guy and the girl? or is the red line in the axis of the men? And that's the hard part to explain to new dancers. How do you train and how do you teach other callers to make a big deal out of this? I do it as, again, the leader trailer. The line's behind the leader and in front of the trailer. No, I disagree. Why is that? The Z, the, they, the boy has to do nothing more than the slide apart this time and turn away and the girl has to step up on the line. I see. And then she turns away. And that's the important part. And I'm wondering if you have a trick, or Barry has a trick, to try to get people to understand that. To be honest with you, I, I don't, but I haven't run into the problem. That's probably why I don't have a, a, an issue uh, or a trick for you, because no. I've not run into it. Maybe Barry has. Have you? Been? Well, my trick is I don't teach it that way. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, could I just have uh, everybody extend to a left-hand column here? By the way, you could peel the top from here, couldn't you? Yeah, absolutely. Just, this sort of gets into the next thing I was going to touch on, so thank me, thanks for setting that up. I'll just briefly touch on it before I answer your question. Yeah. If, you wanna, that now. if you want to get them used to the idea of doing a peel the top from somewhere other than this Z thing, which is exactly where they're used to doing it, in fact, a lot of times when you call girls fold from there, if you don't say something else really quick, you're going to get a peel the top. Um, but if, you, if from there you say, now everybody take a little step forward, make a left hand column, now peel the top. The, go ahead, peel the top. It wasn't a peel off, it was a peel the top. Top. Move up, guys. So, you've you got to work them into a little more than I did there. But, but the fact is, because the, the left-hand column setup they were in is so similar to that Z. They, and they saw how they got there. They saw I was in the Z, I know what to do, and I just took a little step forward, so I'm gonna do the same thing. That kind of preconditions them to be able to execute the fan the top from a left-hand column. So now you can set them up in left-hand columns in different ways. Make sure you put the boys in the lead and the girls trailing, or that will be different again. Uh, so now let's just, uh, to answer, um, Randy. Randy Squid. Randy. I, I knew I knew your name. Uh, everybody explode the wave. And the center's passed through. So when I start working with peel up, I don't even talk about lines and stuff like this. I, 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 I didn't go there. Um, put centers in. Now you can see there's this huge area in here. When I'm teaching my dancers centers in, I tell them, you got to breathe that back. You actually have to back up and make facing lines. So they get used to, or lines back to back, they get used to the idea that they've got to breathe that real estate back out of there when they, when they make that kind of a square adjustment. And normally, of course, if we were doing mainstream, it would be a cast off three quarters here, 
that's something else I do a lot of. I don't do a cast off three quarters after a center's in, I do something else. But since I taught that at mainstream, got them used to that, after the center's in, I say, everybody away from the center of your line, you turn back. Individually, you turn back, but in the direction away from your line, to the center of your line. That's a Bila. And they've gotten used to the idea that they got to, you know, it's, it's turned a box into a line, and fine, everybody's lined up in the original center line of the box, but you've got to breathe everything back together. Um, I found, for me anyway, I find the line idea kind of confusing. You know, by the time, and that's just the way my brain works, right? The, when I try to figure out, okay, the line is going this way and it's gold, right? And I, you know, by the time I figured all that out, it's too late. Um, and then when you get to the situation where you're trying to do the peel off out of a Z, because you can do peel off and not just peel the top out of the Z, then that line thing breaks down, right? Because if, if you adhere to the idea that you're going to settle on that line that's in between the leader and the trailer, now you've got a couple of disconnected couples and you've got a, you know, a C3 split phantom line kind of thing. Ooh. And you don't really want to go there. Uh, so since, how tired are you guys? We're fine. <laughs> you're, you're fine? Move us. Start moving. Uh, pass through. With the wheel and deal. Actually, uh, let's not go here. Well, no, we can go here. Boys, uh, so you're all the boys in the center, right? Yeah. Boys pass through, touch quarter, all your neighbors spread. Did they take that off the list? Okay. <laughs> Everybody hinge, girls trade, swing through. Now, I, I didn't even watch how you squared up, so this isn't going to resolve. But um, the next step beyond, um, you know, girls fold, peel the top, and trying to extend the peel the top a little bit, is what else could you do after you do girls fold, except peel the top? Well, you could peel off, but then, you know, that's kind of derivative at this point, you know, we don't want to go there. Um, and, and here's a little trick, it took me a little while to figure it out. Girls fold, so here's your, your Z's. And I, you know, this really puzzles me. This formation can only be described at C3. You know, I can call two Z's, Z's are C3B. And yet, we use this at plus, and we kind of expect the dancers to know what it's all about. So, you've got this set up now. And how the hell do you get out of that any other way? Always try and spray a girl step up. You could do that. I found an even simpler way. Single file promenade. <laughs> Instant circle. Now, I wasn't watching how you were set up, but if you set it up right, you can do things like, you know, girls, you turn back, swing your partner, promenade home, that kind of stuff. Because uh, once you create that circle, you're golden, right? As long as you've got sequences and stuff, you, you can stop promenading. So, the question remains then, for, for, uh, for Barry at this point, the question remains, how do you teach Peel the Top? How do I teach Peel the Top? That's funny, I ask the same thing. <laughs> I, I, I actually start teaching Peel the Top from left-hand columns. Okay. So the first thing they see uh, is I usually do a left touch, of, uh, or a left touch of quarter from sachet facing lines, and then do a column circulate, because that gives you some, you know, cancels all the bad body flow from the touch of quarter that some people would get if you just did, did the Peel the Top from there. It puts the boys in the lead and the girls in the trailers. So that is the common position that they're used to, but it means that they don't start out with the assumption that you've got to have this weird setup to start. So for them, when they get the singing call figure that's got the girls full, peel the top, they're puzzled by that, not by the, the left-hand column thing. Um, before I even show them the girls full, peel the top variation in a, in a singing call, I'll do right-hand columns, and I'll get them used to the idea that you can peel both ways, and I'll also change leaders and trailers. That's what I'm teaching. But I know that when I'm calling to a strange floor, people that I don't know, um, that you can't go there, right? If, if you don't have the boys in the lead and the girls trailing and it's not left-handed, it ain't ever going to happen. Am I right, Randy? 
You got to do a lot of talking. You, you got to got a lot do a lot of talking to get them through that. So in the, in the context we're talking about here, uh, which is you know extreme, but what was it? I've forgotten already. That's five o'clock. Extended, but not extreme. Um, you got to stick to the left hand setup. Randy, I don't know. Don't give it to him. Don't get squared out. This is a test. Heads lead right and beer left. When I'm teaching my uh, peels, I don't use the, the red line, the blue line, the silver line. I always talk about leaders, trailers, and the box. Okay? And usually I base the peel off with the zoom action. I tell them, for the leaders, it feels like a half a zoom. So once you get them doing that kind of thought process, you should be able to do peel off from here if you know who the leaders are and who the trailers are and how far is that line between you and the people in front or back. This should end up on the red line for John if he was teaching it. You're all going to be on a title with same sex. Everyone peel off. Poor judgment on my part. <laughs> Let's all go back where you were. Okay, so you're the leader. All oh, you're the leader. All the leaders have to be ends of a line. You're going to be the very center of a title, but you're going to be the end of a line that's out of this box. They're the trailers. They're supposed to meet you half the distance. So I have them do half a couple circulate. Would you do that, Ron, with your girl? There's the center line that you're on. Now both of you turn away from each other and you're done. And then you're going to peel and become the very center. You know, you're going to be the, the center. You're going to be the end and you're going to be the end. Once I get my dancers seeing that box and measuring the distance, half the distance, then I go back and then I try to do that Z setup. Okay, let's see if this box can do it. Peel off. Peel away. And you're done. Each line of four, bend your litty bitty line. Square three. Are you the girl? Leaders wheel around. <laughs> All right. Are you close to home? Circle left? I don't know. So, Randy, again, for my edification, how does that help you with the peel the top from the Z? Because I talk about the X and the Y axis. I go into geometry. And if they can see the X and the Y axis, sometimes people are on one axis and sometimes it's half the distance between them. Mm -hmm. Frank, it helps me. Yeah, the what? one you just did with the two pace line. Yes. Uh, the breathing on, on the mic. On the breathing. Uh, how to get the question in what is sure. related to when you're in the two pace line and you're doing the peel off from there, the breathing of the square is probably the most important, important part of that to get that four, four opposite four to Line. You were, you were kind of holding your breath. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Can I make one other comment? Okay. This was on the, the Dixie Grand that uh, Barry did, and this is the extreme, but I use this as a get out. I want to get to a right hand lady line, half size shade, and sequence. Can you guys do that quick? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> so, head square through two. Is this your right hand lady game? Oh, yeah. Slide through, are you in sequence? No. no, you're out of sequence. I want you to be in sequence. Do it right and left through. And I also want you to be half side shade. So here's my get in. It's a right hand lady line, half side shade. In sequence. In sequence. All right, centers, left square through four. The ends, alley man right. Everybody find your right hand lady by the left, left Dixie Grand two thirds, and then face in in your home. Yeah. When I do that one, Randy, I have to slide through on that third hand. I have to slide through on the third hand at home. Yeah. It won't be a slide through on the third hand, John. Did you pull it's a left right? Dixie Grand, ah. so it's a left, yeah. and then I'll right. Right. So on the second hand, okay. it'll be a slide through. There you go. Right. Um, I want to mention that, without a doubt, the two phase line peel off. That's all the reservation sports fans. However, okay. Okay. That is okay. all the could I show you something that isn't so much shot the off? Off the reservation. <laughs> Heads past the ocean. Extend and hinge. 
Everybody follow your neighbor, please refrain from spreading. That's the new call we've added to the list because you can't just call follow your neighbor anymore. Follow your neighbor anymore. Now, just think about what Randy was just doing. Okay, you ready girls? Girls, peel off. Okay, they're on the now, line. That is not something the average plus four is going to do for you normally. Right? They're not used to doing peel offs from there. Again, my question is why? If they know how to peel off, that should be easy. But it is definitely something that is it's beyond really what we're talking about in this context. Now, another reason you don't see this very much is because look what you got. What the hell do I do with that? Man, man, adventure. Okay. Before you move them, sure. See, I was heading in that direction a while ago. I wanted the same peel off. It's perfect. You did that. I'm going to tie it into the next piece, which is the four boys peel the top. <laughs> Lead boy peel. Peel away. Peel would be your left because that was away. <laughs> so we now have a title line. It might be easier to find something to do. Right. <laughs> yeah, put it back where they were. Back where you were, guys. You had a left hand box. Just make a left hand box in the middle. Or a right hand box, I don't really care. Yeah. So, again, the, the reason that a lot of callers shy away from doing something like that is because you get this thing, and what the hell do I do with that thing? And back to John's point is that, that, that often it's something very simple that you can do. We tend to think, especially once you start you know, getting into the choreographic puzzle mindset, well, I gotta do something sophisticated and complicated. But often the way out is something really simple, like girls, wrong way promenade a quarter, boys walk and dodge. And boom, you got something, quote, normal. <laughs> How many of you call slide through from some a setup like this? And, and what kind of success would you expect on the average plus four? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so that is something that, you know, should be easy for a plus floor. My experience is all the way up, even onto some C2 floors, you call a slide through from here, you get random three and one lines. And then you got to figure out how you're going to get out of it. But the good news about that is it gives you a lot of stuff to play with when you're calling. Because it's easy to tell the dancers what they're going to get after that. Um, but that's actually material for the mainstream <laughs> section of this. Um, what I wanted to point out, um, everybody touch a quarter. Girls trade. Everybody hinge. Now, I want you to watch the body flow on this. Girls, you're going to get this peel off again. But hopefully, when we do it all in one motion, it should feel kind of natural. Everybody follow your neighbor. Girls peel off. I mean, they're practically right there. Did it not feel good for you? Yeah, you turned the right way. I mean, you just step up. I thought it was good. So, it doesn't feel that great when they're stumbling through it, right? Like when they're, when they're not sure what they're doing. But once they've got the action down, that's a really nice, slick little, little module. I saw a hand somewhere. Anybody have a question? No? How much time have we got? We got five minutes. Why don't you guys uh, yeah. have a seat? Thank nice you. Nice answer to the answer. Thank, Thank you so much. Service. Look at one thing. If you want to keep the square to do one thing, can we get some volunteers for uh, Jeff to get an opinion? He had one of his own. No, I can dance. Okay. Well, you can dance. We need, we need a square to go. You need a whole square? Please. Somebody jump up real quick. It's going to be fast. He won't, he won't keep you up. We only got four minutes. I know. This will be good. All right. As you said, the hit in the middle, face out, slide through, touch quarter. I'm going to ask you to do a coordinate, but the center boys, after you trade, don't move up. Okay, so coordinate. Let's do that. And I would have done a crossfire at first before the And I want the end boy to circulate to the far end next to the girl. 
the street leading to the fire and went next to the girl. Everybody crossfire. Create an extension. And your column's right back. Huh. Just something quick and not too dirty. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, guys. That's why we should have made this session extended, but not too hairy. <laughs> so we have a couple of minutes. Uh, questions, comments, observations, anything? Did you have anything else, Barry? Really? I, I, I've got. I've, I've got probably like another half hour yeah, to do, too. but we don't really want to go there. If, if we're done, thank you so much for coming in. Have a nice evening for Barry Glassford. We'll see you at the banquet tonight. Thank you, folks.